Masters, who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Well, welcome everyone to World of Wonders Wow Report on Radio Andy. You know, we normally uh, count down the top 10 things that make us go wow. wow. And we'll be doing that this week, but we're going to have a little theme. Sure. I love a themed episode. I love a theme. The theme is our favorite ad campaigns of all time that made us go, wow. wow. Now, wait, is this our favorite, or is this just the ones that really just, just stuck in our craws? Or really, I, do we hate them? Do we love them? What are Yes. Them? It's a little bit of both. Yes. It's intense. a little bit of both. It's intense. It's things, it's, it's the ads that, that just. That's, that's wow. You can yeah. love it or you can hate it. Right. And right. James is very grumpy because he insists we did this exact show before. Well, I also it did not insist that we do it at 6 o'clock in the morning, which is where, what time it is now. Honey, we're, we're live-ish. Live-ish. <laughs> oh, live-ish. Let's, let's start all over again. James, I apologize. It's too late. It's, <laughs> it's Friday, <laughs> James. It's Friday. <laughs> you, li- you like us. It's Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Live. <laughs> Fried day. <laughs> okay, so let's, okay, let's get on with the countdown. Uh, number 10. Number 10. Diet Coke came out in the early 80s and it was such a genius campaign because you thought in the early 80s that Diet Coke was perfect because you were drinking all that awful Coke and all that sugar and all those calories and here was something with less at the beginning, less than one calorie and it was all introducing Diet Coke. You're gonna taste it, you're gonna like it just for the taste of it. Tasted like battery acid, but they said it tasted great. And they had like every sports figure, every celebrity, every A-list, everybody was drinking the can, rubbing against their face. I love when you rub a can wait, against wait, your is face. Wait, is this the one? That, is this the Cindy Crawford one? Well, no, Cindy Crawford did Pepsi ads. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Diet Coke was just—it was a Vander Holy. It was just like everybody you could ever imagine in because one. I'm not ad. remembering the song. Sing it again. Introducing Diet Coke. You're gonna love it just for the taste of it. Less than one calorie in every serve. Am I making it up, or had diet sodas failed until this point? No, because Tab was huge. Oh, but in the Tab 70s. was very narrow. Tab had there was a whole thing in the seventies where it was um, was it cyclamates? There was some kind of um, yes, a saccharin, right? Some before kind of, saccharin, there was something that oh. they thought was really bad for you that was in Tab. Alcinogenic. They took it out and they put in uh, saccharin, which mm-hmm. they later said was bad. Right. Um, that's the whole thing. Diet Coke was supposed to be this miracle drink that it's like, oh my God, if I go to McDonald's, I'll order a Diet Coke and I'll make all the right choices. <laughs> and we turn out, of course, we know now that Diet Coke is essentially smoke in a can. Right, it's right. like drinking a cigarette. And yet, I'm addicted. So, um, but my favorite, the best thing ever in 1986, which was a few years later. Um, oh, but, but, but we're back in the tab thing, sorry. Tab, they were diet sodas. They were for girls. Oh. And, it was, and it was owned by Coke, but it was called Tab. So they, they, they hadn't harnessed the power of the Coke brand into a diet thing, mm. and they were able to make it something that wasn't too embarrassing. It was like the Virginia Slims of <laughs> Tab of, was. Of, yeah, Tab yes. was Virginia. And Diet Coke crossed over, and people, like, well, again, it was smart. Like a mm-hmm. guy, I'm mm-hmm. walking in with a big pat belly like myself would say, you know, I think it's smart. I'm going to give myself a Diet Coke and a, you know, I like to think. I know I live in a world of fantasy, but I used to think that the, the one calorie Diet Coke would surround the Big Mac and fries and I would poop out just the one calorie. <laughs> but that's just how I rationalize getting to be this heavy at my age. But you the, know who else loved Diet Coke? Who? Fanatical. Who? Tammy Faye. Yeah. Tammy Faye Baker. Well, there's something in it that definitely is, is, is addictive, right? But they made it sound like so happy town. And then in 1986, maybe 85, I think 86, Whitney Houston did a um, ad called w- w- for Diet Coke, but she had been she'd been sort of a doe in headlights and everything. And this was like just for the taste of it, Diet Coke. And she was like just for the ah. <laughs> and they had teased her hair and they shot her from below. And I love Whitney Houston so much at that time, and that commercial was so amazing that. And then it was run during the Grammy Awards when she won Grammy for Saving All My Love For You. And I was a, I was a senior in college. I was full Whitney Love. And then here's the lo- end of a long story is a year later in Los Angeles, I've moved. My friend, my good friend now, one of my dear longest standing friends, John Tolens, mm-hmm. who I, I ran into me at a party. I didn't really, he goes, hi, I'm John Tolens. I'm like, hi, I'm Tom Campbell. And he's like, um, we've met. And I'm like, and I usually I fake and I'm like, oh yes. I'm just like, 
I don't remember meeting you. I don't know why I was in a very honest mood. And he's like, um, we met at the Harvard 350th, which is a ceremony thing. I'm like, mm, I don't remember. Met a lot of people there. And he goes, um, he goes, we were standing. He told me the exact location. He goes, and you were saying that if Whitney Houston died today, based on her Diet Coke commercial alone, she would surpass Ella Fitzgerald in the annals of of singers. And I was again, I shook my head. And I said. I've had that conversation with so many people. I cannot. I cannot oh, wait, you that. honestly <laughs> believe that? Wait. At the time, I was very revved up. I loved but Whitney so much. But you honestly believe that, that that Diet Coke commercial would surpass Ella that Fitzgerald? That plus the saving all my love for you. <laughs> okay. I thought she showed everything. So I was. I, I bought into the whole Coke thing. I try not to drink it now. I've given up. You know, I don't do drugs. I don't do alcohol. All that kind of stuff. A, a, a Diet Coke is like going out back it's like crack for you. and smoking a cigarette and blowing it away so the kids don't hear it. So thank you, Diet Coke, just thank for you. the taste of it. Thank you, Whitney, right? Thank you, Whitney. I guess. Uh, James, number nine. <laughs> number nine. Number nine. Um, this is one of those things where I, it's an example of the Mandela effect where I believe that I'm from an alternate universe, that I'm from a parallel timeline because I remember these two commercials like they were yesterday and not one person on the planet remembers them. I cannot find them on YouTube. I cannot find, I cannot Google them. They don't exist. The first one is, it's like an AT&T or an Apple or something and it's an old man, an old businessman. He's like a CEO. Uh -huh. Do you remember that? Okay. And I'm, he, I'm trying to. I want, okay. to, I want to remember this so badly for you. <clears throat> okay, the, the secretary comes in and he says, where are the files? Where are the files? And she says, sir, I emailed them to you. And he says, email? I don't look at my email. I don't know what email. Would Shakespeare use email? And she said, he would if he was around now. And it was one of those commercials that was to try to get old people to do their... Good morning. Beep, beep, beep. We have a winner. James A. James. He remembers it and Blake remembers it too. Um, uh, so it's one of those, it, 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 it was trying to get old people to do, to remember, to do emails and to be a part of the modern world. Maybe it was AOL. Maybe it could have been AOL, but okay, here's another one. This it was very, AARP. Possibly. Oh, right. Here's another one. And it's like in Trafalgar Square or it's in Red Square and it's a guy covered in pigeons and you think that he's crazy and he's shouting out to the, he's shouting out at a cloud and he's going, no, no, more or less, more or less, buy, sell, no, no, what are you doing, no, stop, stop, stop. And you think that it's this crazy person and then the camera swoops around and you see he's got a Bluetooth and an app, like a Google Glass and he's buying and selling stocks and he's like this young tech person. But you, you think that it's, and, it's, and it, the, the tagline is, it hasn't happened yet, but it's about to. And it was like before Google Glass came out and before people had Bluetooth and all this stuff. And it was talking about how like this is the new technology coming from AT&T. Not one person on the planet remembers this. And not, you cannot, I tried YouTubing it. I tried Googling it. I nothing. I'm drawing a blank. Beautifully Ima described. I mean, let's go shoot them and just <laughs> sell something. Imagine a world where no one remembers the Beatles. This is your, yes! what's the name of that movie? Yes, oh, yesterday. Uh, yesterday. Yes, yes. 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 I'm yesterday. living yesterday. I am. Imagine a world where no one remembers the Neither one of you were, no, 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 those didn't bring, uh, but uh, it's interesting bring to, any bells. Because they're completely plausible. I mean, I expected some strange, mad thing that would betray this oh, as a hallucination. No. In the <laughs> it was like the K-hole. The pink <laughs> elephant came to my house and <laughs> complete they sort of one the, the last one sounds like a, a santana or santor hsbc you know one of those sort of yes banking conglomerates yes 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 yes, yes. well so this it. is really a cry for help to the 30 or 40 people who listen to us every week um, if they have seen this please please get into contact and, and, and in russia ask. if you're listening yeah. maybe you can yeah. find yeah. the, the email and, you know it's one of those it's it's like i believe it's like i'm a 12 monkeys like i'm from from another like the, from the future or something like that and i'm in a madhouse i'm, I'm in the nut house right now but it's screaming why doesn't anybody remember could it be you think that maybe you saw one of those um, like TV shows? They used to be more popular where it was like craziest European commercials, and you just saw it oh, on there I or like, something. That's a nice. That's a good thought. No, yeah. um, are you taking Ambient to sleep? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Is the answer yes? I'm taking K to sleep. Is what <laughs> oh, I'm doing. No, you're not. <laughs> I wish we could harness this genius of write, writing ads in the middle of the night yes. in a drug and juice stupa. I think James St. Madison Avenue, right. Jane James. And that man, James St. James. Yes. That Shakespeare commercial kind of sounds like you who never answers their emails. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the call's if, coming if, from if, inside that. We yes. can't post the links to those ads. We will as soon as they're identified and Please we find them. Please help James. No, but if you if you do know the answer to if you've seen these commercials, uh, leave it in the comments on our YouTube. Please, exactly. yes. 
number eight. Number eight. Um, you see the Super Bowl this past year? I mean, I personally didn't. I didn't. I didn't. But the standout, the breakout ad was for Burger King. Okay. What? It was a 1982 videotape of Andy Warhol right. eating yes. a burger. The, the Serge is, Luton's ad, right? That's which, right. Which is also at the Whitney, or was at the Whitney It recently. was indeed at the Whitney. That's right. It's, it's, uh, it's, it actually, the interesting thing is it wasn't made for an ad. You know, it was originally uh, a documentary, part of a documentary called uh, 66 Scenes from America. And it came out in 1982 by a Danish documentary filmmaker called Jorgen Leth. Mm, yeah. Jorgen. And it's, it was, the sequence was, it was, it was 66 scenes from America, and one of those sequences was Andy eating a hamburger, and it lasts about 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, of course, you know, Burger King, having acquired the rights, they cut it down to 45 seconds. Uh, and it's just Andy sitting at a table... He puts down the bag, he opens the... Well, you can just, we'll we'll I, just post the link and you can look well, at it. Well, I thought it was a Japanese commercial and it was um, Serge Luton's. This is, it's not? It was, I'm completely mistaken? Uh, you are, I believe, I'm mistaken. I'm on timeline again. <laughs> this is actually Jürgen Lev, a Danish experimental documentary filmmaker whose 1982 film, 66 Scenes from America. And Was he friends with, with Warhol? He was just making this film about American life. And what's interesting about the scene is that he wanted, he was worried that Warhol wouldn't eat a branded burger. So when he was getting ready to shoot the scene, he sent out and had two burgers completely plainly wrapped in plain bags. And one from Ham, but one from Burger King. Andy Warhol came on set and was like, where's McDonald's? Because he was like, McDonald's is much prettier. He preferred the design right. of McDonald's, rightly so, because Burger King's design's always been a bit too many brown. Although the bacon double cheeseburger is quite good, but they and <laughs> then with they the were Diet gonna, Coke. It's uh, only one calorie. They were going to go out. Thank you. Yes, yeah. they were going to go out to get McDonald's, and and he said, "Oh, this is a waste of time. Let's just I'll just eat the Burger King." So that's how Burger King got their ad. He like just gave in and ate the Burger, Burger King. King because he wouldn't. The last thing he would do, he refused to eat the unbranded burgers. I love that. Oh. You see? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you, it's so funny because you said it wasn't an ad, but it is now. And it reminds me of a moment from Lily Tomlin's Search for Intelligent Life in the Universe, where she's the cr crazy homeless lady talking to herself, and she's talking to the aliens, and she holds up in pantomime like Campbell's soup can. And Campbell's soup, like she's like, this is art. This is soup. This is art. This is soup. Trying to understand the difference between a Warhol <laughs> yeah. and a can of soup. Somehow, it and they never. Him. Yeah, he just loved it. Well, what <laughs> was the Burger King? Was it just him eating a burger? Oh, was there any tagline or anything? Buried the headline. It's a single locked-off shot. It is the most simple, and that's the irony, I guess, of it being in the Super Bowl, where they spend billions on virtual reality and extraordinary special effects and enormous epic production scale, and this is just a single shot of Andy just sitting there eating a burger. And it's interesting. I do remember now because I, afterwards it was on a lot of blogs and everything and it was like the, this generation was like, Andy Warhol did a Burger King commercial and people were just sort of floored that right. this actually existed and, you know, we all knew about this. Right. Yeah. I mean, but it's, it was interesting that, like, it opened up a whole new g generation to Andy Warhol. It did. It yeah. did. I mean, I think a lot of people also had no idea who that right, exactly. strange person there was. It is on my Instagram. Yeah, that did in, fa in fast motion. I always thought it was a Heinz ketchup. And he was he was sort of cute still then, wasn't he? I always I think the fright wig was a really sexy. But he had, he had a nice cute little face in the yeah, 60s. Yeah, yeah. He did. Well, this but but that was in the well, 1982, James. Was, was it? Shot in See, but he was still cute. Though. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what year did he die? 87. 87. 87 yeah. February. 87. Five years for his death. Okay, let's take a quick break. Uh, you have a trivia question. I do. Oh. In 2014, mm -hmm. Felix Baumgartner made a record-breaking leap above the upper atmosphere and made it safely to ground without any harm done. Oh, I remember that. Yes. What company paid for the stunt? Oh. oh. You know, don't you? I think so. I think I know. You're listening to the... Uh, wow, say it. You're listening to the wow, wow report. On... Let's try it again. Oh, You're... my. <laughs> okay. Getting notes. I know. Are, are you, are you, do you smell toast? <laughs> I did. Burnt. As a of fact. Oh. You're listening to the Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. We'll be right back after the break. You 
You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. And welcome back to the Wow Report on Radio Andy. We are counting down the top 10 ad campaigns that made us go wow. Wow. Of all time. I'm Fenton. I'm here with Tom and James and Blake. Hi. Hi. What was the question? In 2014... At Felix Baumgartner made a record-breaking leap. Of he was very cute, if I remember. Felix Baumgartner was hot, hot, hot. <laughs> well, he made a record leap, breaking leap above the upper atmosphere and made it safely to ground without any harm done. What company paid for the stunt? One word, two syllables. First syllable sounds like head. Am I right? Bed. Sir, does beds. Red Bull. Red yeah. Bull. But Red Bull's not one word, is it? It is now. <laughs> Is it, is, it, is it a Red Bull or is it Red Bull? Blake? It's two words, Red Bull. All right, I'm sorry. Oh, well. Still got it right. But I do. I, I stand by Felix. Felix was, was hot, hot, hot. I wish we could put up, pull up a picture of him. Uh, you are missing out if you're not with... Well, <laughs> you know what happened to me last night? What? Okay, so I, I went to a dispensary for my first time. <gasps> and oh my I God. tried a sleeping. I thought this is going to be a good sleep aid. What? Big doing? mistake. I ate, I ate an edible sleep aid. I, you, I feel. I remember you talked about Pardon my before. French because Fenton is fucked up today. I, I feel like when? I am in wrapped in cotton wool at the bottom of a swimming pool. When did it, you become a pothead? I remember this. <laughs> I just thought pot is legal now. I should just go do what the kids do go to the dispensary. What? Well, what, did it not help you sleep? I would think it that it helped you. you know, I kept on waking up. I gotta get to a show. Did We're you? We're doing the radio show. The, the room was spinning. <laughs> I was like, oh God, I hope this wears off on the radio show. You drove. I was like, I have to call in sick or something. Um, did you take it orally? Yeah, it's a, okay. it's a gummy. Just, make, just making sure. It's How else would you take gummies? it? <laughs> There's always an anal option, as oh. we say on Drag Race. There's always an anal option. It's certainly not me out. But anyway, um, <laughs> it says here. All right, we'll, we'll handle you much, you know. Gently. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Oh you okay, God. buddy? I couldn't find You want right. some go water, tent, buddy? Let's take you over to the tent. Yeah, I buddy. Out tent. I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> park my car in the parking lot. I had to, like, do it five times before I could what? get between the lines. You have, like, a road? You are a little bit of a rogue driver to begin with no offense <laughs> i've driven with him before too oh gosh guys i got a speeding ticket too the other day on on highland well highland like i'm going to the gym at like 6 a.m just open it up the yeah road is ahead yeah of you. and so was a cop so um, they have been around lately everywhere i've been seeing but those are two separate incidents yeah you weren't high when you got arrested absolutely no. hopefully. <laughs> hopefully not legally legally I'm not high now. I'm just, it's like, you know, when you take NyQuil and you wake up and you're a bit groggy? No, I don't use NyQuil as a drug. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, we're counting down top 10 advertising campaigns that really got us excited. <laughs> what was number? What was number seven? Number seven. Um, in the 70s, you can back me up on this. I don't know if this played over in the, in the UK, but there were perfume commercials with songs that changed my life. I will name three of them, but the number one is one. But there was there's a fragrance that's here today, and they call, call it Charlie. Oh, kind Charlie, of hip, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. now Charlie. And it was Shelly Hack, yes. who was a beautiful model, very preppy, very sort of Boston jawed. And she and Bobby, it was Bobby Short, right, the piano player. And yeah, he was, yeah. There's a fragrance, and it was just so classy. And she was, it was kind of around the Gatsby movie time. So what it is was very? What does Boston jawed mean? I don't know. She just seemed very kind of patrician, <laughs> and I, I don't know. I made that up. Like Red Bull is. Oh, one yeah. word and Boston Jod is a way to describe Shelly Hack. Lockjaw, okay. Lockjaw, okay, okay. Lockjaw, yes. yeah, yeah. Which there's is very beautiful. There's an howl, and uh, it was kind of a cheap perfume, and I didn't know it. And I bought it for my mom for Christmas because there's a fragrance that's here today. And she was just a girl who was like on the go and came out of a car. She had a great pantsuit on. Yes, yeah, like sort of cream, high would, waisted. Yes, uh -huh. and she would walk into the club and throw somebody her hat, and she was there. She was Charlie, and that was so hot. Well, wait, can, can I tell you? Can I put in one too? Please. And I hope this is one of yours. Uh -huh. The Angelique. That was the next oh, one. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. Which is um, a song that Peggy Lee did, but I didn't know at the time. It was like, I can bring home the bacon, bum, 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 fry it up in a pan, pan and, and never let never you forget you're the man. Forget you're a man, because I'm, I'm a, a woman, woman Angeli. And it was sort of a woman peeling off her glasses, letting down her hair, taking off her apron. She was coming home from work, and she yeah, was just, but now she was, she was ready she to be a woman. She can bring home the bacon, <laughs> fry it up in a pan. 
and never, never let you forget you're a man. And that, again, was about as sexy and Vegasy as anything that happened yeah. in my house. And then my favorite, which was on for a very brief time, and you can watch it on YouTube, and it stars Lola Falana, who is the forgotten oh. artist of our oh, time. What a woman. You might want to say she was the black Joey Heatherton, but that would be say, enough. I was going to say, but yes, that her and enough. Joey. Uh -huh. Yes, they were like these, these they, were, they were kind of born too late. Like they were like these Vegas song dance mistresses that kind of came just at the end of the variety Sex show. Sex kittens. Sex kittens. And she was in a, a, a tiger painted bodysuit and she goes, I was sitting, uh, um, I was sitting, and she was like a tiger and she had, her hair is bouffant and she had stripes and she was animal and her eyes are beautiful and she's a beautiful African-American woman. She goes, I was sitting in the tall grass, just walking, watching the world pass. And I started walking and they started stalking. Here comes the tigress, here comes the tigress. <laughs> Tigers go because men are such animals. <laughs> And it was like a Gauguin. It was like a Gauguin painting come to life. It was all like African American men and, and you know boys and tight butted like things. Oh, you're gonna love it. I'm gonna play it for you. Was it for Cologne or yeah, it's Tigers Cologne because men are such. It was for men. Tigers Cologne because no, it's for women. Tigers Cologne because men are such animals. I was sitting in the tall grass, just watching the world pass. So and I started walking, and they started stalking. Here comes the tigress. I don't remember this Here one comes the And I was the biggest Lolofana fan on the planet. Tigers Columbia, because men are such animals. <sighs> they just, and I love, yeah. You know, Perfect. I fell into a Joey Heatherton Serta for Serta hole the other day where she was doing all the mattress commercials. Yes. And then she was like, go, go dancing on the mattress. Oh, buy good. a perfect sleeper, perfect, perfect sleeper, sleeper by Serta. They sold mattresses with sex. She'd be like in a bodysuit and she had little, this is Joey Heatherton with little like uh, punky, spiky blonde hair. And it was all like her just being. Gamin. She yes. Was, she was a gamin. <laughs> the other thing they did was uh, uh, Muriel cigarettes used to have a lot of sexy. Let Muriel light your life. The 70s were just sexy. That is my desire. Muriel! Because where there's Muriel, smoke, there's fire. Ba -doo -ba -doom, doom, 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 doom. Pow! <laughs> I'm on. <laughs> how, many, how many fingers do I have up? <laughs> Did you have batted ass here in the States? Batted ass. No. Bad and the bash. tagline was things happen after a batted ass bath. It was a sort of woman in a towel lurking by a window. And. I was always taking battered ass baths, hoping things would happen. <laughs> <laughs> he was pruned. He was all this wet and pruned. Nothing, nothing did. Number six, James. Number six. Number six is another 70s thing, because uh, I, was, I was much younger than you were in the 70s. Yes. Funny and how you've caught up. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, silly Rabbit Tricks are for Kids. Silly Rabbit? Silly Rabbit Tricks are for Kids. And it was a Saturday morning commercial, and the, the rabbit, would, after the tricks, and the rabbit, they would, they would never let the rabbit have the tricks. Why? And it was so frustrating. Yes. It was very frustrating to me as a child, because I wanted the rabbit to have the tricks. We all did. We all did. We, in, in, in fact, there was a, um, uh, an, uh, um, a poll that was taken in the late 70s, I believe, in which they want, they asked the children if they wanted the rabbit to have the kids, and they were going to let the rabbit have the kids. Tricks, and that, the tricks. Tricks, what? The tricks company was going to let the rabbit have the kids. Uh, tricks. The, the, the tricks company was going to let the rabbit have the tricks. Correct. Right, okay. And But then they never did. They ended up, at the last minute, stealing the, the tricks away from the rabbit once again. And it was... Uh, well, did the kids uh, vote for it? The kids voted for it. They, they wanted... Yeah. The, 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 overwhelmingly, the children wanted the, the rabbit to get and the tricks. And it was tricks. the beginning of Reaganomics. No, yeah. I'm kidding. But it was I can't, also, I can't connect them. But they were saying at the, at the same time that this happened in the 60s is when they first started coming out with the, the commercials. They opened up the door for Charlie Tuna, and Charlie Tuna was never allowed to have the tuna. Yes. If you remember... Well, well, but Charlie was the tuna, wasn't he? No, ch well, ch ch he was—he was a tuna with, with good taste, but they wanted tuna he that tasted good. That's cannibalism. He wanted to be captured by Sunkist. A hook would come down. They'd be like, "Sorry, Charlie," because he wasn't. Yeah, he, he was wasn't tuna. tasty enough. He, he, yeah, he wanted. They wanted tunas with, with that tasted good. As a, and he oh, said I that he was a, he was a tuna that had good taste. And he would always be painting a painting, saying, "Look, <laughs> I have good taste." And they would say, "No, Charlie, we want tunas that taste good, not tunas with good taste." And so he was never allowed to, to be a tuna that was eaten. Sorry, Charlie. But then there was also, if you remember, fruity pebbles, in which um, uh, Barney would never let Fred have the pebbles, and he would always do some elaborate prank on Fred and he'd be running away. Yeah. So run away with it with the fruity pebbles and Fred would always be chasing him there was so also, they were creating a sense of scarcity to make us want to buy it or something well no but it was <laughs> it was just so this, hard. we were always being thwarted we were just uh, as children right. we were just always being thwarted there was the hamburger there was um the lucky charms the leprechaun for lucky charms these these mascots never got what they wanted and it takes me back to a trauma that I had with um Sesame Street and I know that we've talked about this before in, in this 
alternate timeline of mine. <laughs> yeah, we had a top ten countdown about it. Well, it was a top ten. It was just a, the traumas of James. <laughs> um, but the Snuffleupagus and how nobody ever saw the Snuffleupagus on Sesame Street except for Big Bird. And the, Big Bird would always run saying, I've seen the Snuffleupagus. And everyone would be like, there's no such thing as the Snuffleupagus. And the minute they would turn their backs, the Snuffleupagus would come out. And he'd be like, there it is, there it is. And then the, the children would all turn around and the Snuffleupagus would be gone again. And it turned out that um, Sesame Street ended up having to have the kids see the Snuffleupagus because children who had been abused were all were, nobody ever believed them and they would say I'm um, you know my parents are abusing me blah 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 and it, the adults would never believe them and it was a big trauma for children at the time so that Sesame Street had recognized that the children who had been, were being abused were being traumatized by nobody seeing the Snuffleupagus oh and so they goodness. had to turn they had to let the children see the Snuffleupagus so that you, we would believe the children we would but because people wow. weren't believing the children so it was like one of those traumas for me that I was like you know let the let the rabbit have the tricks let the let the leprechaun get the lucky charms like why is this not happening and still to this day it upsets me <laughs> wow and then i, I want my mtv which that generation was, uh, of, of deprived of their tricks? Well, which which I've learned in in Try my again. in my um uh, <laughs> research about this that I want my MTV is actually a throwback to the 1950s. I want my Maypo. It was a big yes. commercial, oh. and so when they were saying I want my MTV, it That's was a right. play on that famous commercial. Lego my Maypo was uh, one of the things. Lego my ego. Lego my ego. Yeah, but no Maypo. I is, want my Maypo. You're right. You're Maypo right. is oatmeal. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Eggos are waffles. Correct. Yes, okay. yes. Oh, right. You're learning. You're, you're learning what's, about America. What's this called? <laughs> <laughs> Eyes, ears, nose, mouth. Number five. <laughs> Number five. Apple. I can't believe you guys haven't talked about Apple campaigns because, like, you know. I did, but it was an alternate Apple. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Pair. I was actually, I mean, in my confused state, I was thinking that the campaign I was looking for was called Think Different, right? Right. The Think Different campaign is not to be confused with the 1984 campaign. Totally different. Right. So I was going to oh, start... Oh, is it the 1984? Is, okay, I know this one. All right. Oh. Right. So the 1984 came out in 1984. It, it, I actually, this was the one I really meant. You know, the, you know this guy, this multimillionaire, bought London Bridge? Yes. And he had it shipped to Texas. And it was the Peace wrong bridge. Is, and he had bought the wrong effing bridge because yes. he wanted the bridge with the towers on it, which is called Tower Bridge, not London Bridge. Well, this is my experience. Wait, someone bought London Bridge? Yes. The and one they, that fell down? No, they dismantled it. Yes, 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 that one. They dismantled it, shipped it to Texas, reassembled it. He's like, that's around since the 16th not, century? That's not the bridge. It was Tower Bridge that he wanted to buy. Yes, 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 yes. From the Fergie song. But London Bridge is falling. London Bridge is not very impressive. It's Tower Bridge is the one. Anyway, this is a diversion. Where are we going with it? <laughs> I tell you exactly what. How where. does this have to do with Apple? I was researching Think Different, thinking it was the 1984 commercial. Right. So I'm going to end up really talking about Wait a minute. two commercials by Apple. 1984, which was the original one that came out in 1984. Which aired once during yes. the Super Bowl. Exactly. Is that the one with the giant, uh, giant screen, Orwellian, yes. Orwellian dictator-type yes. mumbling, we shall overcome, we are one unity, and a single player in color. Everybody else is there in black and white, black and white zombies watching the giant screen, and a single Olympian-type person comes in with a hammer running. She runs, she throws the hammer, explodes the screen. I think a really interesting message, because I think that... The whole idea was like that Apple was counterculture and it was rebellion, and yet, ironically, Apple has become the big brother, big screen. For sure. We all use our Apple devices, and in that respect, I think we don't think different, actually. I think we all think the same, because I think the device you use changes the way you think. Well, I mean, that's that thing that it. every yeah. counterculture becomes the culture mm, eventually, wow. and every 60s radical ends up becoming the... But it's just ironic, isn't it, that their whole marketing has been based on this idea of rebellion and of iconoclasm when they've ultimately become... Right. I mean, Was uh, there a tagline to that 1984 ad? Oh, yes, a very good question there was. And All I'll right. read it to you because it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, what does it say? Oh, that's right. So on January 24th, Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh, and you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. So the tagline Ooh. makes it all make sense. And then right after that, Apple sales spiked. You know, yes. they, they, 
sold shed loads of, yes. of and it aired once that's the crazy thing it, again yeah. shifted put their brand on the market yeah. and shifted perception it is a remarkable and thing. this was before like the internet where you saw the commercial over right. and over exactly. again exactly and then of course the next the one that i thought i was researching is the think different campaign which is completely different this was in 1997 yep and the interesting situation was that apple was hemorrhaging cash they had no new products so they just created this campaign. They didn't, it wasn't selling anything. It was just a brand consciousness raising exercise that worked brilliantly. Yeah. Um, and that was like they had like Einstein, wasn't they, it? Exactly. Connected with different individuals. Einstein, over Thomas Edison, Muhammad Ali. And, it, and Apple were doing really, really badly at the time. In fact, the guys, someone said, um, they, did a, they did a campaign with a bunch of dead celebrities because they'll be dead soon too. Because yeah, everyone thought Apple was going to fail. We should do one with Joey Heatherton. Think different. Lola Falana, think different. Is Joey still around? I believe she is. And you know what the impact of that ad was? That stock price tripled within 12 months. Hmm. Hmm. Just leave you with that. Less than the cost of a latte? Think different. You know, ah. marketing can change everything. Right. How is Joey still? What does she live on? Where, where, where does your money come from? I don't know. I, I know that, you know. She's got to be old. Joey I mean, like, has the very, uh, you know, she, years and years and years ago, she lives, I think, in a building across from the Four Seasons on Doheny. And she was married to a football player who was arrested for, I believe, pedophilia. And, and, and yeah. But I have oh. a friend who saw her at the pharmacy. Wouldn't it be interesting if she and Lola were like roomies and they were like struggling? I think Lola, I could be totally wrong but is suffering from something like MS or something. Do you know why? Why do I say this out loud but I don't know? Why do I say them out loud on the radio? <laughs> do you know why they came up with a line, Think Different? <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, hey, hey Fenton. Hey, Fenton, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> why did they come up with the line, Think Different? Come on. What are we talking about, Fenton? Um, because, because they wanted to uh, turn a adjective into an adverb? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> because at the time, IBM's tagline was, Think IBM. Oh, oh very was, direct, uh, very targeted. Repost. Yes. Okay. I think we should take a break. A long break. <laughs> <laughs> we might be back. Blake, have you Maybe got a, a question? Nap. Months <laughs> and months and months. I do have a question. What internet behemoth started as a dating website on Valentine's Day 2005 and sold to Google a year and a half later for $1.65 billion? What? Mm. what year? 1985? 05. 1905? 2005. <laughs> oh, okay, you're listening to the Wow Report of Radio Andy. We'll be right back. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Hey, welcome back to the Wow Report on Radio Andy. I'm Fenton. I'm here with Tom and James and Blake, and we've been having a grand old time counting down the top 10 ads of campaign of all time. Yeah. Well, made us one... go. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 We yeah. had a question, Blake. I did. What internet behemoth started as a dating website on Valentine's Day 05 and sold to Google a year and a half later for $1.65 billion? I'm completely having a blank about this. Maybe it was YouTube. <gasps> Match.com. Yeah. Match.com? YouTube. YouTube. It actually started as people could upload videos like, you know, In video dating. And Nobody then they had to pivot. And then they pivoted, yeah. Mm -hmm. and but we couldn't upload videos in 2005. Yes, you could. In fact, you know, uh, this is an interesting well, little detail. In we were actually developing and had hired, it's a sore point, we hired software developers to write a program like YouTube. And well, the whole wow, idea TV. was in a world of 500 channels, why not 50 million? <coughs> that was the... You're ahead of your time. This uh, was Wow TV, and then right? slightly well, behind. <laughs> and, and then, and then the behind. YouTube launch, it never, we never launched it. It never got past testing. But I remember that. But I remember trying to upload videos on the blog in 2004 and 2005, 2006, and it was just impossible. Well, YouTube at first it didn't really work at first, did it? No, that's I mean, what I'm saying. It, was it wasn't until like 2007 mm -hmm. that we were able to actually... Back to the ads. Number four. Number four. I grew up watching television, as you can tell by this conversation. I loved everything about television. I was just, you know, we had, in 1976... Not only did we get our first color TV, we got cable. Mm -hmm. But until that point, we had ABC, CBS, NBC, PBS. That was it. And uh, in the 70s, ABC was the young person's network. 
because it was Bewitched, That Girl, Mod Squad. In the 70s? Yeah. It was a young people. It was, it was like, you know, CBS was like Barnaby Jones and Cannon and, you know, 60 Minutes and Gunsmoke. And NBC was kind of a wreck with emergency and just. Emergency was fabulous. Oh, uh, yeah. I had such a crush on him. The okay. Bond one. All right. I thought it was a little slow moving. But I look forward every year. I especially remember Julie London was on that? Yes, oh, she was so beautiful. But she was a little past her prime, I thought. Anyway, <laughs> um, I learned since. I used to watch that with our friends. Anyway. In the fall, when, but now we have programming. We have a million channels. They, they premiere all year round, but it used to be the fall lineup. And ABC, better than any other network, would create sort of like a network campaign to let you know that the songs are coming. And ABC, because of Jiggle TV, because of Charlie's Angels and Three's Company, and, Three's Company, and they were just number one. Love Boat. What was the one with the Ann Jillian where they were all waitresses? It's a living, living. living. Uh -huh. And so they use the song, Still the one I want to make you invent. You're still having fun, and you're still the one. So they adopted that song as the network theme song, and then they would... Again, I'm such a geek, but they would clearly have a promo day, which I would know now. And all of the people to so it be like Tony Danza from Taxi next to Angelian going, still the one. And they'd have like big ones and sets. And I just thought that was the most joyous celebration of my ABC family ever. Was you don't remember year? those. You're no, right? I totally remember those. Now that you're mentioning it, yeah. I totally remember it. And I remember because um, that was the year that... Um, uh, there was a, a, a spinoff from uh, Happy Days, and it was um, Laverne Shirley, Blansky's Beauty, Blansky's Beauty. Yes, and they were um, all was a Vegas showgirls or yes. something. Yes, and was it Pat Morita? Was the was Mister? Was I think you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> you don't remember? Did they have those in England? The BBC have those. Yeah, they have seasons and like a sort of reskinning and a yes. whole promotional campaign. But they would still, uh, that, still do. And ABC had been the third network. Forever and ever and ever, and, and in the seventies with Jiggle TV, with Fred Silverman, with Nipples and Charlie's Angels and Three's Company, even um, Too Close for Comfort with Jim J. Oh, Bullock. Yeah. But it was oh, about the, those two daughters. It was, you know, it was, uh, with the Landers girl was one of them, right? No, no, no. It was a uh, Cornell, Lydia Cornell, and Debbie Yvonne Falkenberg. I know a lot of stuff. Oh. So we'll post some of these promos on the Wow Report, right? We are and who was still the, was the, the one? She was, she did a lot of um, Nancy Dussault. I love Nancy Dussault. You know, um, Bravo used to kind of do this. Like they haven't done it in a while, yes. but a couple of years ago in the summer they would yes. have like all the housewives. From That's a throwback to that uh, right. thing. Did you know that Nancy Dussault? I know this from seeing a clip, and we'll go. She was the mother on uh, Too Close for Comfort again, uh, opposite Ted Knight. That she was on Broadway, and as an ingenue introduced the song. Make someone happy. Make just one someone happy. Really? You like? I, you, I thought that was like a '30s standard. No, it's it's from a show from the '60s. But it's just like you realize, you know, oh, growing up, it's like, oh, Nancy DeSoe is just some sitcom mom. It's like, well, no, we, she was a Broadway but ingenue. Like Betty Buckley, who was on one, um, yes. uh, uh, eight, eight is eight enough. enough, and we just thought she was the mother on yeah, Eight Is Enough. But mom. she's now she's the, she's the hugest Broadway star. Yes. She just took over with um, uh, Hello Dolly, Hello, and Dolly. she's she's better than Bette Midler. <gasps> I don't know if the show can go on. Uh -uh. James, what a campaign at number three made you go wow. Number three. Do, 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 do. La, la. Mentos better. Fresh goes better. Mentos freshness with freshness full and full of life or something like that. I didn't get it from the melody. I did get it from the word <laughs> Mentos. I understood it was the Mentos. Those are weird commercials. Those are very strange commercials. And I was reading a history, the, the bizarre history of those 90s Mentos commercials. Yes. And it was um, a man... Um, they seem like Danish or something. Yeah, they were very ace of base. Well, they, they were in nights beginning, beginning in 1992, the Netherlands-based confectioners um, did, came up with the Fresh Goes Better, and they started doing these commercials that were very odd, and it was um, the they were known for their hammy acting, for the general sense that the ads were trying to approximate American culture rather than actually be a part of it. Totally. Sort of like a robot mimicking emotions of the human counterparts. Um, it was an ad company called pa Panic and Partners, out of Hamburg um, that conceptualized the spot. And it was usually, there would be a group of people, a group of good looking young people, yes. and they came across a problem. And the only way to solve the problem was to pop the Mentos, and then you got inspiration. And it would be like he was a, a, a waiter, and he wasn't getting his food in time, so he put the waiter outfit on and did was with the waiter himself after he popped the Mentos. Or there was like a car that stopped and they couldn't get across the street, and so they went through the car, and the guy, was, the guy driving the car was like, what? <laughs> 
<laughs> and so I also was, remember another one where the car couldn't move, so the big buff guy like picked it up and moved it. Probably. Yeah. Probably. There, there was there was dozens and dozens of, dozens of these commercials. The ads seemed um, disconnected from actual bu- human behavior, and the song itself was crit- critiqued for appearing to be an English translation that didn't quite get the lyrics right. It doesn't matter what comes, fresh goes better with life, and it like sort of makes no sense or anything like that. So it was and deliberate. It I was mean, de- <clears throat> well. It, it wasn't deliberate, but once they realized what was doing it, they sort of played off of that. Right. And um, people either hated them or they loved them. In fact, the Foo Fighters are famously did a music video yes. where they, they did yeah. this Foo, yeah, the did Mentos. They, wouldn't they hold them up and it would look like a middle finger or something? Like, Mentos, am I crazy about that? Probably. I mean, there was just some, they, were, they were just, just very, just very off. off and bizarre. And the people, they looked like... Like they weren't. They it were good. Like, it looked like Bell Ami porn. It, yeah, <laughs> yes, but they were sort of like the this um, in the nineties. But no one I've met. The, in the, on Saturday Night Live, there were the um, the the two guys. There was the. I want to pump you up. Uh, the pump oh, yeah, you yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Roxbury guys. And then you, the Roxbury guys. Yes, I think that was sort of a riff on it. On um, Family Guy, they have these two blonde guys. I don't know if you watch, and they they always talk like they 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 don't quite understand English. Yeah, yeah I, I vaguely remember that. A Mentos and th- so they're not a, an American candy. No, no, no. They, like they're I Danish? said, they, and they were they were Danish, and they weren't doing well at all, and they, they had flatlined, and so that's when they came up with these. What commercials. I remember about the thing I enjoy about a Mentos was coming in century is was the mouthfeel. Because they were in the that mm. loose packaging, they were round and chewy, and you would eat them. And you could pop. You put it yeah. into your mouth, mm-hmm. and you would take one, mm-hmm. and you would take the other one with your teeth. And, so. and then you got inspiration, and you were inspired to, to solve uh, yeah. a problem. Hey, no and then tea. I picked up a car once, and then <laughs> I went and I bought do, do, edibles. Do, 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 I bought do. edible sleeping aids for Fenton, and I forced <laughs> him to eat them. We really should start every every segment by reminding people that Fenton is tripping right now. <laughs> Fenton is tripping balls. <laughs> do 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 do. Wah, wah. Mentos goes better. Fresh goes better. So surreal. Number two. <laughs> Number two. Uh, progressive. Insurance? They're all around you, these progressive ads. Have you seen them? I mean, you must have seen them. Wait, are because we talking Flow? Flow. But they have, they have built, they have with, by, they've kept Flow, and yet they built a whole new world around Flow. Flow is a whole rounded out character with a family and relatives. In fact, after I think several years of doing the campaign, I think for her hundredth anniversary, for her hundredth ad, they had they introduced us to her brother, her sister, and she played her all mother, played, yeah. and she played. Yes, yes, that's right. She played. And the all sister of them. is a slacker, and the the aunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. We had her I love this like ten years ago. Do you remember I'm, that? I remember yeah, I'm that because everyone we were obsessed with her, and we wanted her on Drag Race and stuff. And she's kind of like, I can't. I, 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 my soul belongs to progressive. <laughs> what's what's the feeling? What do you? Feel? I mean, because I feel that they're sort of they're not brilliant in the sense that they're ubiquitous. They're all around you. Yes. But you don't really quite notice them. Like it's not like Apple, which was right. such a statement. Well, campaign. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Yeah. I have a feeling because the Geico ads really are very brilliant. And there's the Geico lizard and the Geico right. Right. Um, uh, mm-hmm. cavemen and the Geico squirrels. Right. And there's like there's like dozens and dozens of these different characters. And I think that they were trying to compete with Geico when they. Came up with flow, and it does. It's it's funny because she's managed to last, and yet yeah. they, they don't really. And they're very meta. Yeah, you know, yes. that but, like, they do, but they aren't. They they aren't. You're you're right. They aren't really brilliant. Is, but is that a, is that genius to be just that little bit off? So that you don't get sick of it. It's almost so, like, exactly right. It, they're they're are, always there. You're always being reminded of brand awareness, but yeah. you're, you're not annoyed by but them. But you aren't threatening to exactly. the to the to the be- yahoos in in Middle America. Right, exactly. You know, because it's, sometimes it's some th- some things are so if meta it's too meta and, crazy, and too clever, yeah, it's you, elitist and it's giving mm-hmm, the finger to the. And this stupid is something that, that is just some of clever my best enough. friends are yahoos in middle America, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we the, can uh, tell because <laughs> also I was so kind of like looking at these ads and thinking, well, what actually is progressive? Because I was like, and they were like saying that they came up with this whole campaign. Flow is uh, began as a uh, cashier in a superstore. And they created this superstore. The, the words of the marketing guy was to make the intangible tangible because what Progressive does is it sells insurance. And, and so they created this sense that you go to a store and there's a super friendly, super helpful person there to help you. Because, of course, and that she'll isn't knock the down way. The price and right, that isn't right. the way you no, buy it's like a Walmart. <laughs> it's just on the phone. Yes, they kind of uh, localized it or physicalized it. But it now, were. have you noticed they all have brought in the new character of the really annoying guy with the red hair? Yeah. And, you know, 
I don't like him. <gasps> I don't. I, I'm not there with him. Remember, and then he has a wife now, and he's got, and he's like sings when there, he has this great party. Remember this one? Have you I one? I just remember the one where he, he sees his mom. Never mind. No, I, I, I have to say, yes. <laughs> but it's, I'm having now a memory of every character from the 70s, like Rosie, the quicker picker upper bounty, mm-hmm. Mr. Whipple, please don't oh, squeeze Mr. the charmin, and how these oh, those characters are so. Uh, uh, what was it, Mrs. Olsen with Folger's Coffee? And how, it's kind of brilliant that they've well, kept... Mrs. O- Mrs. Olsen for Folger's Coffee, that was the Wicked Witch of the West. Mar- Margaret Mitchell, there I think she, she did. No, Margaret like, uh, Hamilton. Hamilton, right. Well, I think it's remarkable that Flo is still going. Yes, because North, that they've kept her. The I Wendy, mean, how many you know, years the, has it the, been? Where's the Beef Lady was only on the air for like... Uh, uh, well, Less than a year. Time to make the donuts guy was, right. you know, he was uh, ten years, and but I think Rosie was around for thirty years, probably. Yes. Mr. Whipple was around for twenty or thirty years. Mr. Clean. Again, you could please don't squeeze the Charmin. I, another another oh, way yeah. you couldn't get it. And poor Mr. He was always trying to squeeze the Charmin. <laughs> I, I think there's a movie oh. idea here yes. where you take all the retired characters. Like, they were never able like to get toys, what they want, and like, you give it to them. Make a Toy Story you for the for the sort of obsolete spokespeople. Yes, yes, that'll be the song. They're all in a sort of limbo land where they've been retired, and they've got sort of maybe it's just, maybe it's together. a game show. Maybe it's like a reality show where we put them all in a house and let them have the things that they want, and then right. Well, they're all dead <laughs> except for flow how how many how many years do we know has the flow campaign flows uh, started in 2008 so it's been 10 years it oh. seems longer than that it sure does. Does. Longer, well they it? have so many i mean yeah. i think they've done something like 200 ads at this point um okay we're gonna take a quick break uh when we come back we'll reveal the number one ad campaign that made us go wow, wow. Um, you listen to Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to the Wow Report. Uh, I'm here with James St. James, Tom Campbell, and Blake Jacobs. We've reached the number one spot. Did you just go somewhere else? Is that what happened? He's been traveling. He's been mind traveling this entire time. <laughs> I've show. been in your alternate universe watching those <laughs> He comes down and lands and is right with us, but in the meantime, he's hovering above us. <laughs> yeah. It's like he's, 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 he's like got a, a balloon that's he's, just floating he's away. He's like a spider leaving his web, sort of coming down <laughs> on a little thread and popping back up to the web. Am I right? Yes. I have no idea what number one is. Someone have number trouble. One. No, you do. You do. You this do. is you. This is all you, baby. This is you telling the story. It is number one. Teach the world to sing. Yes, you know all about this. Go. I'd like to teach the, the world, world to sing in perfect harmony. Do, 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 do. Grow apple trees and honey bees. So tell us the story about this. White turtle doves. It's the real thing. I wish oh. I'd come to the meeting before this because I don't know you anything. You totally do. It, it was. It was. Um. I remember watching <laughs> it as a kid, and I remember them parodying it on Mad Men's. Mad Men's finale. No, it wasn't a Very parody. They good. said on the Mad Men's finale, he, they said that he was the one who came up with it. Remember, because he was at the 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 chakra. Or whatever, I mean, he was at the. the Here's what I know. <laughs> the original idea came to Bill Backer, an advertising executive working for McCann Erickson, uh, who was the the the, the, the the Coca-Cola agency. Maybe he was the model for for um, Don Draper. Really? Oh, okay. So Bill, Roger Cook, who's a composer, and Billy Davis. I don't know who he is, were delayed at Shannon Airport in Ireland. And after a forced layover with many hot tempers, they noticed their fellow travelers the next morning were talking and joking while drinking Coca-Cola. Backer wrote the line, I'd like to buy the world a Coke, on a napkin and shared it with British hit songwriters, uh, aforementioned Roger Cook and Roger Greenaway. And guess what song they wrote? They wrote To Sir With Love. A long, cool woman in a black dress. Oh, that's a good song. Yeah, and also the Gene Pitney hit, Something's Got a Hold of Me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and then, of course, it was a great commercial. It's called the Hilltop Commercial because yes. it's diverse young people gathering on a hill. The hippie and movement the, the beginning, capturing. You know, the beginning of the hippie movement, the beginning right? of the flower children. And it, amazing to me, actually, looking back on it, to think how unironic it was. Completely absence of any meta, no cynicism, completely innocent, sweet... Sunlight in their hair. Well, that's what, they, that's what the hippies were in the beginning. They yeah. were just completely well, but, but beautiful. This was 1972. Well, I that, think. that was that was the height of the hippies. Okay, 
And then, of course, the commercial was so successful, they got the new Seekers in the studio, re-recorded it, changed the words, took out the brand product placement, and it became a huge, huge, huge hit single. I always assumed it was a song that they co-opted I into so an too. ad. I thought First it was the other song later. That very rarely happens, mm-hmm, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Except for uh, Barry Manilow songs. Which, like, yes. what? What? Like what? Like what? Well, Barry Manilow wrote jingles. Yeah, that's what he. That's all he did. That's he, what he started. He wrote the KFC. He wrote. Uh, McDon- guess uh, he wrote the. Um, you deserve a break today. today. Uh-huh. We're close by, right on your way at McDonald's. We we'll do it all for you. He was a jingle writer. Yeah, that's he, where he started. And, and don't you remember when we went to his um, concert and he does that whole thing where he does nothing but commercial songs and everyone, everyone when they do you know the, <laughs> the insurance was commercials and he goes yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks for tuning in to The Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. Listen to previous episodes on our YouTube channel, Wow Presents. And if you're feeling really extravagant, splash out on Wow Presents Plus, only $3.99 a month, where you can watch Work the World, the only behind-the-scenes backstage tour of the world official Work the World drag race tour. Some of your favorite drag queens Mm. on tour it, it's one tour, but every episode features a different drag queen. So it's, it's a deconstructed, really cool way to watch a concert film. It's really brilliantly done. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. Uh oh. Oh. James. Ten is- hits you didn't know were jingles first. Okay. Hold on. Right. That could be a future this episode. This kind of research is really helping us out here. <laughs> My. Oh well, God. thanks for tuning oh, in. That was it. That was it. That's <laughs> the tease. Well, that, no, but it won't. Be. I, it, maybe that will happening. be. Any of this make air? Will the whole episode be on the cutting room floor? This wait, 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 here we go. Stay here we go. tuned. <laughs> It'll just be music, <laughs> commercial, Technical music, difficulties. commercial, yeah. music. Wait a minute. Here we go. Oh, All right. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's go uh, for yes. Pepsi. Yes. My Adidas run DMCs. My Adidas was it for first. Um, let's go Pepsi. Oh, yeah. sure, um, pop sure, it. Yeah. Let's go. Um, <laughs> red sure, cups. Red solo cup was sure, first. Uh, was first. Um, uh, you know that was a first commercial for the red solo cups. Um, uh, I wonder if our our show's an hour rig- and five <laughs> minutes or is this an hour? What do you think? Forever by the Wrigley Doublemint song for, 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 became a huge hit. Yeah. I must say this. I'm show just feels wondering, is it extra a long five minute show? Or it, no, it, come on, you guys. This is interesting. Show? Let's get it started. Was the Black Eyed Peas first started as a commercial? For and then what? It became, for what? Well, that's what I'm trying to find out. That's what I'm trying. Originally, let's get it. Let's get it. I would think of this as the closing music theme, and we should probably sign off over. I think it was the NBA playoffs, is what, what the commercial was started yes. for. Okay, I think this should be a yes, webisode. It was. All right, we're going. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you same time, same place next week. Until then, go out and do something that makes the world go wow. wow. Bye.